Hi everyone, today we're talking about accounting for transactions in a merchandising operation. We're focusing on the periodic system and in this video we're talking about purchases. And of course I'm your instructor Brandy. This video is going to use the same examples that we were using under the perpetual method in our previous video and the goal here is that you can watch the perpetual video and the periodic video and compare and contrast how the entries are done under each method. The business cycle for a merchandiser looks like this. The business buys inventory, so they have to spend cash, and they sell the inventory for a profit, hopefully, so they make money. They then use that money that they're making to buy more inventory, which they again sell for a profit, and so on and so on. This video is going to focus on buying the inventory under a periodic method. So what exactly is the periodic inventory method? We do not keep a running total of the inventory account and we perform an inventory count in our warehouse or our shop at least once a year to update our inventory records. So let's go through our examples. Our first example is that Parker's Shoe Store purchases $1,000 of shoes and pays cash on May 1st, 2016. Remember that the shoes are Parker's inventory, but under the periodic system, we're not going to use the inventory account until the end of the accounting cycle. So in order to record this transaction, our journal entry is going to look like this. Our date will be May 1st. Our debit is to an account called purchases and our credit is to cash. Under this example, we're now purchasing $500 of inventory on account on May 2nd. And remember, this on account means that we are going to be paying later. So our journal entry is going to look like this. Debit to the purchases account for $500 and credit to accounts payable for $500. So let's continue on with our example. On May 5th, Parker's Shoe Store pays for the purchase on May 2nd. So they are now paying off their accounts payable. Our journal entry will look like this. Debit accounts payable for $500 and credit cash for $500. So let's start looking at our T account for purchases. On May 1st, we had a purchase for $1,000. And then on May 2nd, we also had a purchase for $500. And let's go back to our example. So continuing on with our example, on May 4th, Parker's Shoe Store purchases $2,000 of inventory on account with terms 2, 10, and 30. These terms are discount terms. What these discount terms mean is that they will get a 2% discount if they pay within 10 days, but the full amount is due within 30 days. Remember that when we actually make the purchase, we don't worry about the discount. It's when we actually pay for the purchase that we assess whether we're within the discount period and therefore we can take advantage of the discount and lower our cash payment to our supplier. So our journal entry for our purchase is going to look like this. So now when we pay off our purchase on May 9th, we assess, are we within our discount period? Are we within that 10 days? And we can say, yes, we are. So we can take advantage of our 2% discount. Our journal entry is going to look like this. I'm gonna start by completely canceling out the accounts payable that I owe. The next thing I'm going to do is calculate my discount. And my discount is going to go to an account called purchase discounts. And the discount is calculated at 2% of my account's payable balance of $2,000. The cash is the difference between the amount in the account's payable and the amount of discount I get. So if we look at our T accounts, we're now adding a $2,000 purchase from May 4th, and we have a new T account for an account called Purchase Discounts, and it has a $40 credit balance on May 9th. This example has us returning $400 worth of merchandise purchased on May 1st on May 10th. So remember that we don't keep a running total of our inventory account, so we're not going to update our inventory. What we're going to do is we're going to use an account called Purchase Returns and Allowances. That will be our credit. Our debit will depend how we paid. If we've already paid for this purchase, then we're gonna be expecting to get cash back from the supplier. So either we're going to set up an accounts receivable for them, from them, or they're going to give us cash right away. That's going to be our debit. If we haven't paid them yet, we can just reduce the amount that we owe them by debiting our accounts payable account. In this case, we've already paid our supplier, so we'll set up an accounts receivable and be expecting them to send us a check for $400 and our credit is going to be that purchase returns and allowances account. Let's move on to our allowance example. Remember that this word allowance means that we're not actually returning any inventory 
We're keeping the inventory, but our supplier has agreed to give us a discount in exchange for keeping the inventory that we're somewhat unhappy with. In this case, the allowance, we are going to use the exact same account as when we had the return. So our journal entry, other than the numbers, is going to look exactly the same as the journal entry above. Now let's take this to the T accounts. We're gonna need a new T account for our purchase returns and allowance account. And we have two things happening in our purchase returns and allowance account. We have a credit for 400 from the return and we have a $100 credit on the 11th from the allowance. Continuing on with our example to include freight costs, when we receive a freight bill, in this case for $50, and we're paying it right away, under the perpetual method, we would have debited our inventory account. Under a periodic method, we're gonna use an account called freight in. So under the perpetual method, we just had our account called inventory. Under the periodic method, we have purchases, purchase discounts, purchase returns and allowances, and freight in. So now that you've watched this video, you should be able to account for purchase transactions under the periodic method. Thanks for watching everyone.